to the Fit for Privacy podcast with Punit Bhatia. This is the podcast for those who care about their privacy. Here, your host, Punit Bhatia, has conversations with industry leaders about their perspectives, ideas, and opinions relating to privacy, data protection, and related matters. Be aware that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are not legal advice. Let us get started. How can companies embed ethics into corporate culture? And what is the correlation between privacy and ethics? This and more with our special guest who has been in United Nations Secretary General's Digital Cooperation Committee and also many other standardization committees. And I'm talking about none other than Professor Edson Prestis. So let's hear from him. So welcome Edson. Welcome to Fit for Privacy podcast. Thank you so much, Punit. It's my great pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for your kind invitation. We are happy to have you. And maybe let's start with, how did you learn about privacy? Because you're a computer engineer, if I may classify like that, or somebody uh-huh. who specializes in computers, engineering, and AI, and private, or other things. And how did you have that intersection with privacy or touch about privacy? Thanks so much for your question. That is very interesting question because um, I I joined, uh, I started investigating the domain because of my involvement in the ethics of artificial intelligence. As you know, to have a very good uh, AI based system is necessary to have data. So this data is very important to train that system to output the desired outcomes. So we have a lot of uh, discussion about the potential implications of the AI system and this potential implication coming from the data. So that's the reason why I'm involved in interest in the discussion about data and privacy and security also. So in that case, how do you see privacy from a computer engineer's mindset? That is very interesting because uh, for me, uh, privacy is what do you want to share with your others? It's more focused on the information per se. Mm-hmm. Like I have a set of information, I want, to, uh, I want to decide what information I want to share. For me, that is privacy. Okay, that's very simple and clear. What you want to share and that decision is privacy. Exactly. Like uh, I can share my name and my address, but I don't want to share my uh, political view or my religion. So I can select exactly what information I want to provide. So privacy for me is that. So that's interesting. Privacy is the choice of sharing. And you would have heard about GDPR. And when you think of GDPR, is there any one word that comes to your mind? Protection, protection, Hmm. regulation, protect a regulation. That is very important. Because uh, I need to decide what to provide, but uh, I need to uh, protect that the information that I provide uh, are not shared with uh, unauthorized users. Mm -hmm. So to guarantee this protection is also guarantee some sanction for those that provide without my authorization is necessary to have a regulation. So GDPR is, in my view, a, a very good regulation to guarantee the, the privacy. That's very true. That's very true. GDPR allows us to protect our personal data. Exactly. Now, we are in a modern world. It's digital and there's a lot of drive on robotics, artificial intelligence, data science. I mean, these are your core field as well. And how do you think we can protect privacy in this modern world? Because this AI, this uh, data science, all these are data hungry fields. These need data to flourish. These need data to provide us outcomes. And then we are talking about restricting the usage of data in context of privacy. So how does one protect privacy in this changing context? That is a a quite interesting question because um, uh, it's necessary to have a, a some uh, uh, like we discussed uh, some regulations that we uh, that we guarantee in certain aspects 
that what you you you, you or what you want to share will be shared with only uh, uh, specific users. And for guarantee, the sharing is necessary some for a uh, computational system. Like, a, it's like an antivirus. So we need to have some computational system to block some, uh, un, uh, some uh, unintended access. And also some computational system to avoid some leakage of the data. So any system that uh, uh, access information through the internet should have uh, some uh, some uh, firewalls, some this computational system to avoid that, to avoid this access. It observed that uh, this system uh, lies on the you and the user part and also in the company parts. That hmm. is very important to make this model work because uh, I don't want others or third party to access the information that uh, uh, is in my computer. And when I provide this information to a third party company, to companies, this company should protect, should guarantee that the, uh, any unauthorized user have access to my information. That's very interesting. But that is, but that is very, very, it's very difficult, but that is very difficult. Because sometimes we have a valid access. Like a, I have a valid kind of transaction, but the, the, the processing that I do with this data will be an invalid one. Like I can say, okay, are you using only information about your GPS, your name, your address, and so on. I can do a kind of a processing to, in certain aspect, manipulate you. Yeah. Or at least some partners. Yeah. And I think that's very true. These, uh, you, the way you see it, there is like a firewall or protection system that we need to have on network. Same things on robotics or AI. We need to put in these protection mechanism in form of privacy controls that allow us to monitor and restrict processing to the purposes where we, we were agreeing to process the data rather than anything we want to do it. Exactly, because uh, if you consider an uh, AI-based system that run on a computer or in a um, robot, we have a computational system where this computational system receives data and processes this data and outputs some, uh, some information. So we have uh, this computational system, we need this kind of protection. Every time that you have a digital technology, we need the protection. Yeah. So in the context of this robotics and AI, we often say privacy and privacy is a regulated area. But then we talk about the role of ethics because now ethics is situational, ethics is societal, ethics is personal because ethics for one person can be different, ethics for another person can be different. And the society, the gender, the person, everybody influences how ethics is. So what is the role of ethics in the corporate world? That is very interesting because um, uh, uh, every time that I give some interview, uh, this question is posed. <laughs> because when you think about ethics, you're thinking about the ethical theories. And of yeah. course, we, have, uh, we do not have uh, absolute ethics because we, we live in the diverse world, in very complex world with different culture, different religion and so on. That is the first uh, very important point to create what you used to call responsible innovation. Right. Because responsible innovation should not impact negatively people's life. So we need to understand that you are different per se. So that is very important. Uh, this understanding is very important. And that makes some links with uh, this relativism that you find in ethics. But when we discuss ethics in the development of responsible innovation, we discuss the diversity, we discuss more the implication of technology. Hmm. We observe that uh, the, the people are different and the system has a different impact across the world. But what would be the impact? So the impact could be uh, uh, on health, could be uh, economic, could be social, 
could be cultural. So we need to understand that you have the diversity, you need to create technology that adapt to the, to the end user, that you yeah. not create any kind of uh, negative impact on the people's lives. So the discussion about ethics is to see the community, understand the diversity, and try to think about a solution or a set of solutions that, uh, that could be adapted to different uh, realities. It's hmm. much more than discuss ethical theory, because ethical theory, it's important to realize how complex is to make the decision, is how complex is the decision make the user. Like, uh, okay, I can think only in the ends, but I can think only in the, in the means. What is the best? It's much more than this in our perspective. Yeah. I think that's a complex question anyhow. Ethics, uh, how do you define ethics? What are the different models of ethics? And that's also then a challenge for corporate companies because how can you embed, how can you take ethic as a, say something to be embedded into your organization? How would you embed it into your corporate structure? Like some of the companies I consult or I work with, they would have an ethics board they would have ethics governance and they would have ethics ethical or ethics policy or ethics guidelines but how do you recommend or how do you suggest a company can incorporate ethics into their structure yeah in that in that case um, i would recommend first is the identify uh, some uh, uh, core values in principle that should be pursued during the development of a, of a new technology. Because all these elements will have a, an impact on the end user, like a, as a discussion about the social implication. The social implication could be, for instance, uh, unbalancing in the, select, uh, in, the, in the selection of potential um, employees, okay? Could be uh, discrimination could be an impact on the environment, okay? Because of the computation of power, the, the, the heavy process in that system could, could, uh, could perform, could have. So what are the main values that the company should pursue? Like, uh, okay, non-discrimination, fairness in the decision, okay, uh, sustainability, protection of the elderly, protection of the children, like uh, uh, traceability, transparency, that are some that are uh, are some examples about the values, and the the question is how to implement that. With these values in mind, in principle in mind, you you develop some strategy to implement a responsible innovation. Like if I don't want to make some discrimination, I will check in my system how this, this discrimination can happen in which part of the system. Like uh, if I have a data or sensible data, like information about gender or age, for instance, I can have some discrimination if my data is not balanced. Okay, if, I, if, so if the focus is sustainability, environment sustainability, I know that the algorithms has a complexity different kind of complex. So why not to optimize this algorithm? Mm -hmm. Optimize not only the processing, but the use of resources, like the access to the internet. Mm -hmm. So if I want to make uh, um, some decisions that you could have a life and death impact, like so someone could, uh, could, be, could have a solicitation for uh, emerging emergency denied, okay? So probably uh, this person would like to know why uh, his, or, his or her solicitation was denied. So it's necessary to have some mechanism, transparency, transparency mechanism to provide some uh, responses uh, about uh, the, that decision. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. So if you suggest that start at the top with corporate values, establishing that, what do you, what does the company stand for? And then develop your ethics approach and get exactly. it embedded 
to the all the levels, including where software or anything else is being designed or developed. Exactly, exactly. So that that was the line that you pursue in the UNESCO recommendation, because in the UNESCO recommendation, it's a recommendation uh, that contains a set of values, principles, and also recommend recommendation for the member states of UNESCO to elaborate a national, regional, international strategy for artificial intelligence. So if I want to create an, a national strategy, what are the steps? What companies should pay attention? Mm -hmm. And the, also the, the seed thing. Makes sense. And I think you mentioned UNESCO, your company or your the organization IEEE also has a lot of uh, guidance, a lot of standards which are available. So tell us more about IEEE and your role also in the organization. Okay, thank you so much for asking. Uh, the IEEE it is, is the largest uh, professional and technical society in the world. So it has a lot of members uh, in different parts of the globe. In the, in the IEEE, we have, we have different flavors. You can see that, like uh, we can, uh, in the IEEE, we organize a conference, we publish uh, technical uh, standards, we publish technical papers, uh, we have uh, interaction with, with the society, with government, and so on. In the IEEE, I'm involved in two different societies, the IEEE Standards Organization, and also the IEEE Robotics Automation Society. So I have uh, different holders in these associations. Like uh, in the Standard Association, I'm a chair of a IEEE working group called the 7007 uh, Ontology for Robotics Automation Systems. In the Robotics Automation Society, I'm also a member of different advisor boards on humanitarian applications and other also in the standardization activities. So uh, I'm deeply involved in, with the IEEE. Since when I was a student. Interesting. And when we hear about ethics, uh, it's good that there are standards, but there's always confusion because ethics is normally the choice between good and good or bad and bad. So it's not a moral choice that is between good and bad. Ethics is choice between good and good or bad and bad. Like somebody is driving a car or the car is autonomous, self-driving. It's driving on the road and it sees it has two options. One, two. It's a common example. You know, I know you're smiling there because in academia or even explaining ethics, that's what we discuss. So one is you can hit a seven-year-old and the other is you can hit a 70-year-old. And the car has no option. It's a theoretical uh, choice. So, how, what critical factors do play in those kind of ethical choices? That is a very interesting question because um, uh, we try to find the a good answer. You have two options. What option you should show? But uh, you do not have a final answer for that no. because. Uh, uh, we have, uh, like uh, we mentioned before, we have a diversity in the globe. So uh, we have a diversity also in the answers. Uh, a, publish, a paper published, I think one year, on one and a half year ago, discussed exactly this problem. It collected uh, answers from different parts of the globe. It was quite interesting because uh, we have a, a mix of the answers. We have a, 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 a half of the participants choose the option one and other half choose the option two. Yeah. So imagine the, the, how complex it is to make a machine to, to, to deliberate this, uh, this answer. It's very complex. Yeah. That's the reason why uh, uh, this uh, toy example are very important to understand that it's very complex to create an artificial system that are really intelligent. Yeah, and I think that's where the complexity comes because the artificial intelligence system also can learn by themselves. But exactly. the car that is put in Brazil versus car that puts in India versus car that puts in Europe, 
they would behave differently because they will learn different behaviors. They will learn different uh, set of actions based on certain uh, situations. So that makes the life of developers as well as those uh, programming them very, very complex. Exactly. Like if, for instance, uh, if I want to create an, an effect, affective system, like a, a humanoid robot that have some eyes, mouth, it can walk and so on. This humanoid robot should have a, a set of values principle in the, of the region that where uh, he or it will be inserted. Otherwise, this humanoid robot could have a, a negative impact on the user, like uh, the, 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 um, the, the duration of eye contact. In some, uh, in some uh, uh, cultures, this duration of eye contact could, could indicate uh, sexual har harassment. Hmm. Yeah. Or could be uh, uh, could could it could it also indicate uh, some violent behavior. Wow. Or even or even the distance that people stay during a conversation. Yeah. Could be a violation of personal personal space. Yeah. So all these elements could have an impact. Like uh, are you stay so far or so close or too yeah. close from you during a conversation. Oh, what are the signs that my hand can do? Or oh, the tone or the pitch? Yeah, I think th and that's why being online or being virtual is relatively more uh, open and more safe in, uh, in the world. Because in a cultural issue, as you mentioned, how close you are to the person, what tone you are using, how much eye contact you're using, these can create an impact. But that is all the complex world that we've talked about. Let me switch to more lighthearted conversation, which is a segment <laughs> we are creating. Because uh, if I may ask you to choose between time, wisdom, and health, so you have three choices, but you can pick one. You can have time, you can have wisdom, or you can have health. Which one would you choose? Wow. I think wisdom. 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 That's wisdom. Interesting. And you, you yeah. want to share your rational? Like, uh, in fact, the, the three, the three options are extremely important. I uh, like, uh, yeah, like uh, I used to say that time is the most important element for yeah. a human being. It That's is. the reason why I always try to be on time. In my in my talks, <laughs> because of that. Thank you for but that. Some some people do not uh, agree with that, but mm -hmm. I, I like to be. Uh, I, I like the wisdom, because with with wisdom you can personally uh, you can do the 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 good choice. You can mm -hmm. make the good choice, but without health, Unfortunately, it's not possible to make a good choice. You do not have also have time yeah. to do the good choice. So they are interlinked. But I, I, I must confess that I prefer the wisdom. Yeah, I mean, uh, you said it right. There's no, uh, no right answer because with one, it's the other one. And with the other one, it's the other one. But it's a trick question and it allows us to have a different kind of conversation. So that's why I ask. And... Another one I would ask is, if we had to choose between, uh, say you were, you were advising a student or a company, and there was a conflict between privacy and ethics, which one would you choose to follow? The privacy choice or ethical choice? But uh, you mean the uh, ethical in profession? Okay. So there's ethics. a project ethics. Yeah. Ethics. 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 I expected. It's that. much. It, yeah. It's much much more important. Yeah. I have a set of beliefs. So, I never did what I do not believe. That's interesting. And uh, in fact, I would even stretch it because this, I, this is a question. If you are ethical, there is a greater chance you'll be compliant with the privacy law. If you're only compliant with the privacy law and not with the ethical choices, 
then I'm not even sure you are compliant with the law because it's a fallacy that I can comply with the law and not with ethics, especially the privacy law that the GDPR yeah. talk about. That's a very interesting question. I never thought about that, but I always pursue the ethical behavior. Always. Yeah, that's uh, of course. So thanks for that answer. And if you had to choose between privacy and security, so you're developing a system, AI-based system, and you have to choose between making data private or making data secure. So ensuring privacy versus ensuring security. Where would you put your money on? Oh, let me think. Because uh, the idea of... Uh... Oh, that is very tricky. Very tricky because it, privacy is extremely important when you know exactly what you are sharing and what, are the, what kind of processing the third part you do with what you are sharing. Because sometimes I can share a lot of data, but I have no idea about what kind of processing yeah. the third party you do with my data. So I can guarantee uh, the privacy, but uh, I cannot guarantee the processing yeah. uh, with the, 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 the data that I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. I think data protection, protect data protection. It's more makes, important. Yeah, makes sense. So I, as it so happens, the conversations go through and I feel like we've just started. So, <laughs> and we've come to the end. And if somebody wants to contact you, somebody says Edson Pestis was a great conversation in the Fit for Privacy podcast and I'd like to contact him. So how can they contact you? Uh, they can uh, send me an email. My email is edson.prestis at i3poe.org or can also visit my webpage. Mm -hmm. uh, the name is a, uh, a bit long, but uh, I, I believe you can, if you kindly uh, put it in the put show it, notes. Then, yes, please can, can send me an email. That is the, the, best, uh, the best way to, to contact me. Sure. So with that, I would say thank you so much, Edson, for your time, sharing your thoughts, sharing your wisdom, and we were happy to have you. Thank you so much, Punit, again, for your invitation. I really enjoy this conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you. Fit for Privacy helps you to create a culture of privacy and manage risks by creating, defining, and implementing a privacy strategy that includes delivering scenario-based training for your staff. We also help those who are looking to get certified in CIPPE, CIPM, and CIPT through on-demand courses that help you prepare and practice for certification exam. Want to know more? Visit www.fitforprivacy.com. That's www.fit the number four, privacy.com. Thanks for listening. If you liked the show, feel free to share it with a friend and write a review. If you have already done so, thank you so much. And if you did not like the show, don't bother and forget about it. Take care and stay safe. Until next time, goodbye. If you have questions or suggestions, feel free to drop an email at hello at fitforprivacy.com. That's hello at F-I-T, the number four, privacy.com.